Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is News Now at Noon. And thanks for joining us. I'm Justin Gould. And, I, <clears throat> and I'm Matt Hummel. Now at noon, a woman is facing charges for meth manufacturing. Plus, a local event raises money for St. Jude's Hospital. But first, it is a hot one outside. We check in now with Chief Forecaster, Dakota Hunter. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Jay and Matt. And speaking about hot, it is hot in the studio. I think they have our heat on for some ungodly reason. And uh, it's just all these studio lights make it hot. And oof. I've got a fan in my office that's helping to keep me cool. But yeah, uh, it is summer and uh, we should not be this warm this time of the year. And I just wanted to start off with the radar just to show you there's nothing here. We'll talk more about this radar imagery a little bit later on. But uh, the high yesterday actually was 81 degrees. Uh, that actually was a couple degrees a bit more than what we expected. We forecasted 79, so we did a little better than that. 64 degrees was our low this morning. And again, the record for today is 86. I think we'll be just a few degrees shy of that, but uh, we'll see what happens. But tomorrow, might be a record breaker. So 75 degrees for the early afternoon, a few high clouds in the sky. Otherwise, the sun will continue to shine like we had yesterday, 82 degrees in the afternoon. Summer's still got that grip on us and it will continue throughout the afternoon hours. As we go into the evening hours, we'll only back out to around 72 degrees and uh, that's quite muggy and humid as well. We'll talk about Michael, how's that uh, hurricane going in the Gulf, if it, will have, uh, if it will have any impact on us. Plus that seven day later on in the show, Jay Matt. Alrighty, Dakota, thank you. A Forestville woman was arrested last week on a warrant for meth manufacturing. The Southern Tier Regional Drug Task Force tells us that 28-year-old Trisha Kenny manufactured meth out of her house. She also allegedly disposed of the toxic byproducts and laboratory materials illegally. She was arrested and arraigned and released to the Erie County Sheriff's Office to be arraigned in multiple jurisdictions. She'll return to a Hanover court for further action later on. A man wanted on multiple felony warrants was arrested by the Jamestown Metro Drug Task Force yesterday in a Foot Avenue house. Jamestown police said 37-year-old Willie Graham was taken into custody by the SWAT team around 1230. Investigators reportedly recovered a quantity of crystal methamphetamine and two rifles inside the house. One of them was a 3006 the other, a semi-auto 9mm high point rifle. Graham faces a number of charges. Anyone with information on the possession of illegal narcotics or weapons in the Jamestown area is asked to call the Jamestown Police Department. President Donald Trump will host a campaign rally in Erie, Pennsylvania this week. The event is at the Erie Insurance Arena, scheduled for 7 o'clock on Wednesday, October 10th. General admission tickets are now available online. According to the president's campaign, the, rally, the Trump rally will speak about the economy efforts uh, to create new jobs in the area. The event is also intended as a show of support for Republicans there who will be challenging the Democratic U.S. Senator Bob Casey for Pennsylvania's November election. Now, Lou uh, Bar, is it Barletta? Is that how we say it? I believe so, Lou yeah. Barletta. Um, is, what's his background? I'm, I'm not sure. We obviously, a lot of the, the, the uh, with this Trump rally, uh, which, you know, I will be attending as a, as a, a reporter mm -hmm. on Wednesday, you know, uh, being very close to our coverage area mm -hmm. in Erie, Pennsylvania, you know, uh, probably as close as I would imagine we'll get to the president. Yeah. I, I, you know, you, none would think that maybe he would come to Chautauqua or Cattaraugus counties. Buffalo, you know, I, I attended a campaign rally years ago in 2016. Um, not that long ago, actually. Mm. It seems like it was long ago. Um, so we'll certainly see uh, what the, uh, the feeling is there. Mm. Obviously, you know, we've seen a lot of people online saying that they're, you know, not going, they're protesting the president. A lot of people mm. saying they are going and that, that, mm. that will be there in full support. So certainly will be a very interesting night uh, to see um, as well. I wish I could go, Justin. I want to see the atmosphere. Sorry, I, well, because I, they gave me the uh, the assignment ticket. Mm, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, I guess I'll watch the atmosphere on Twitter. I will be tweeting, so but, follow, you can follow me on that if you want. But hey, at least right now, on a serious note, investigators are combing through evidence in Shohari, New York. 
They're trying to figure out what caused one of the deadliest transportation crashes in the United States in nearly a decade. 20 people were killed, 18 inside a limousine, heading to a birthday party, and two pedestrians were caught in the chaos. Mary Maloney has the latest. We investigate fatal crashes all the time, year-round. But this one is, the magnitude of this one is, is a, you know, different this, for us. Chilling new details are emerging about the limousine, a modified Ford Expedition. According to New York's governor, it should have never been on the road after failing inspection just last month. The governor says the driver didn't have the proper license to be behind the wheel. In New York State, a limo with 15 or more seats available, excluding the driver, falls under the definition of a bus and requires a passenger endorsement. The focus for investigators now, the airbag control module, which acts like a black box for a car and can reveal details about the crash that remain a mystery right now. We don't yet know the cause of the accident, if it was a vehicle malfunction, if it was a driver malfunction, driver error. That's part of the ongoing investigation. The tight-knit community of Schoharie in upstate New York has been rocked by the deadly crash. Friends and family members of the victims say they're struggling. It really makes you question your faith at a time like that. You know, how can God take away so many people at the same time um, and leave kids without parents? I'm Mary Maloney reporting. Monday night in Amsterdam, New York, a candlelight vigil was held to show support for the families who've lost their loved ones in the fatal accident. And next here, a number of local traffic alerts to tell you about. And later, it is feeling like summer outside. Dakota's back in action, and it'll tell us how long the heat will last. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. Coming soon to downtown Jamestown, Pearl City Hops Restaurant and Tavern. The full-service restaurant will carry a wide array of craft brews, wines, and food pairings to make your taste buds sing. Enjoy breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, including a Sunday brunch buffet. A truly one-of-a-kind experience coming soon. I just love to be with the dogs and I like to do them one at a time. They don't wait for five hours in my shop. We have full groom, which includes everything from A to Z, nails, of course brushing, tri any trimming that needs to be done. I do offer teeth brushing, which is a little extra. So if he takes me two hours, it's $40. If he takes me three hours, I still keep it down. As long as the dog comes back happy and not at the door, I'm happy. The weather is heating up and so are the deals at Express Bike and Auto right here in Jamestown located at 1761 Foot Avenue Extension. They are your one-stop shop for all of your vehicle, ATV, and motorcycle needs. They even sell vehicles and guess what? Financing is available. So what are you waiting for? Get to Express Bike and Auto right here in Jamestown at 1761 Foot Avenue Extension now. Fall is here and Dorler Landscape Designs is ready to help you with fall cleanup. Visit their website dorlerlandscape.com and download their fall cleanup special coupon. For more than two decades, Dorler Landscape Designs has worked hard to get your property ready for winter. And once the snow falls, count on Dorler Landscape Designs to keep your driveway clear. Call Dorler Landscape Designs today and let us work for you. Dorler Landscape Designs at dorlerlandscape.com. And we have two traffic alerts to tell you about this afternoon. First, New York State Police are looking into a crash on the I-90 Expressway near Dunkirk where a tractor-trailer semi crashed into the medium. Emergency crews responded to milepost 471 eastbound around 5 a.m. this morning for a tractor-trailer in the medium with injuries. Starflight assisted at the scene, taking victims to area hospitals, Investigators said more information will be released later today. The portion of I-90 is now reportedly reopened and traffic is flowing. 
And also, Chautauqua County's CART services for Route 40 should now be reopened. The service runs in the Climber Panama area. Department of Public Facilities Director Brad Bentley told us that the closure was due to, quote, unforeseen circumstances, but the services will continue as normal starting at noon. In the 14th annual Reflection to the King, Elvis Tribute Competition raised $4,400 for St. Jude's Research Hospital this weekend. This year's event had a distinct international flavor as Sylvian Le Duc of Quebec, Canada won the event. Patrick Below, also of Quebec, finished third. Gordy McNeil of Fort Erie, Canada was fifth. And the winner of the Spirit of Elvis Award was Ben King from Perth, Western Australia. King flew 13,000 miles, 38 hours by air to compete. The event, owned by Bobby and Roy Arnold, has raised thousands of dollars for St. Jude's, which is one of Elvis Presley's favorite charities. This year's two-night event was standing room only. Our Rory Polero was at the event all Ooh. weekend long. He joins us now live with more. Now, Rory, you were more than just at the event. You were a judge. Yeah, I, I, I judged it once years ago, and they asked me to come back last year, so I did it last year, and I did it this year. And uh, the judging is difficult sometimes because some of these guys are, are, are very close in skills. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the ETA, Elvis Tribute Artist, world because in our competition, unlike other ones, in this one, they pull for each other. I've been to some where they cut each other's mm -hmm. throat. And in this one, they all pull for each other. And at the end, even if they came in last, they're happy for the guys who won. Now, how do I do with those French names? I'm not good at the French. Well, Sylvain Ledoux yeah. and uh, uh, Patrick Ballou. You did oh, good. You I did was well. clo close you, enough. And, and so, you know, people from all over yeah. the world come to this event in, in Little Old Westfield, which is pretty impressive. It's at, it, it, it started out in, I believe, Batavia, but it's been 10 years up at the Westfield Moose. Mm -hmm. And they do a great job of hosting it. And uh, they've... I don't know the specific number, but I'm estimating at least $50,000 has been raised over wow. the 14 years. And next, they're already starting to plan next year's, which, God willing, I'll be there as a judge. And my brother Sterling does the emceeing. And a lot of guys we get are back every year. We get guys that come every year. I've made some great lifelong friends through it, and I love judging. Now, we've talked to uh, your brother Sterling uh, before, who you know is very well known in the community as uh, an Elvis tribute artist. Yes. The, the sort of fame and the notoriety behind Elvis Presley is still very much a big thing today. Uh, he's the all-time top seller in music history. Um, he, he, Suspicious Minds Alone, I believe, has sold 40-some million copies worldwide. And uh, so that's, what, 40 gold records for just that one song? Um, or, or platinums, I'm not sure. Um, but Elvis, new generations are picking up on him. Um, I, I think part of it is his charisma and his history, but I also think part of it is his humanity, and I also believe a part of it is the music from past generations doesn't seem as like a product mm -hmm. so much as like a heartfelt song. So Elvis continues to be popular, and he was voted the, the um, he actually a few years ago was voted the greatest musical performer of all time. Wow. And worldwide? That's the, the worldwide ever oh in history. My. I mean, and that's that's beating Bing and Frank yeah. and, uh, you know. And, and a lot everybody. of these guys, you know, as a judge, it's, it seems like it's a pretty difficult challenge to take. You know, a lot of these guys are very similar to the king. Well, we score on the vocals, obviously, mm -hmm. and there's a separate vocal award. Um, we score on their outfits. But we score on things like if they're wearing a 1973 jumpsuit and they're singing a song that didn't come out till 75, they lose points for that. We try to be authentic. You don't wear the sunglasses during the performance. That's a cliche. Um, we also judge on how they respond to the audience, their showmanship. And then the only Elvis, as far as we know, the only Elvis competition in the world that has what's called the what if. The what if is they take a song Elvis never recorded. Mm -hmm. And they sing it how they think Elvis would have done it. 
That's wow. pretty cool. It's actually very challenging for the guys, and some of them yeah. pick some really unique stuff. Wow. I certainly imagine uh, a great event, uh, and of course, details on a huge Facebook following right now. They can check out the Reflections of the Kings Facebook page, and uh, you have a great uh, web story up on WNYNewsNow.com as well to, to check out. Uh, Rory, uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Awesome. And, and next here on News Now, Facebook launches a new smart speaker. Details on this new device and how it can bring you closer to your friends. But... Dakota Hunter on deck with the deets and the heat when we come back. The Fitness Bunker in Lakewood is a locally owned and operated club that cares about your health and wellness. They invest in it. Right now, enter their 30-day challenge where for only $69, you get 30 days of unlimited everything. That's right, everything along with two one-on-one -on -one personal training sessions. Then, if you lose 10 pounds, you'll get the next month free. Plus, the first place winner will get two Buffalo Bills tickets or a $100 gift card. Details right now on the Fitness Bunkers Facebook page. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Turn to Brotherhood Property Maintenance for all your lawn care and landscaping needs. Serving both commercial and residential lots, check out Jamestown's fastest growing landscaping crew on Facebook or call us now to book an appointment. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. First Defense Weather is sponsored by Quick Solutions of Jamestown. Count on Quick Solutions for printing, copying, mass mailings, and so much more. Part of your team. Learn more at quicksolutionsusa.com. That's quicksolutionsusa.com. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. A smart speaker to bring us closer to our friends on Facebook. Hmm. Wonder how much of it will be used to connect us to our friends and how much it will be used to spy on us. Here is a live look at the, the uh, Sky Vision camera coming from downtown Olean. This camera is on top of the, uh, the tallest building in Erie, which I believe is the... Um, I forgot the name of it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's on the tallest building in Erie. 79 degrees with that south wind of 7 and 68 is that dew point. And again, that dew point in that 60s makes you, it, it's, it's just that stickiness out there. Again, chances of rain over the next five days, really nothing over the next couple. But another front comes our way on Thursday. That brings us the better chance for more widespread showers and storms. And again, the rain will become more scattered in nature Friday and Saturday as we go through the weekend. And things will be changing late in the week as well. There's you. And first defense Doppler radar, nothing in western New York. This rain, and there's some snow back there, but that's not going to bother us right now. This uh, rain is going to be kind of associated with the frontal system. And this uh, yellow box you see down here is actually a uh, tornado watch for portions of Oklahoma. And uh, they're dealing with some severe weather. But it really is the battle of the seasons. Take a look at this. It's warm and humid in the east. And it's cold and snowy in the west. There's a lot of snow out in the Rockies. So again, it's really a battle of the seasons uh, going into uh, October. Here's Hurricane Michael. Uh, it's starting to get in range of the radar view. So again, this little spin you see down here is actually the uh, outer bands is starting to come, uh, come within radar view. It's, a, it's cu uh, currently a, a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 110 miles per hour, wind gusts to 130. And uh, here is the official forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. You can see here it's going to come up into the Gulf as a, as a major Category 3 and make landfall. It looks like somewhere near Pensacola, and then it'll ultimately work out this way. And then our other concern is that this is going to ride right up along the, um, it's going to ride uh, near the uh, Carolinas and the Carolinas haven't even recovered yet from Florence just a few weeks ago. So again, this is going to bring more heavy rain to the Carolinas. It's going to stay away from us, but just want to mention that if you have friends or family down there, that uh, they'll be going through another wave of some heavy rainfall down there. HD News Now, Cam, the flag is behind me. You can see it right there flying. I'll step on this side. There you go. The flag's flying and uh, you can see that here. 76 of the current temp with that southwest wind 
to 12, and there's that wind gust to 17, and that 65 degree dew point makes it feel more like 78 degrees out there. Now, things will be changing as we go into the week. This is the upper air winds, and uh, you can see here that uh, the heat ridge moves on out, and then the cold air starts to come in from the north, and that means cooler temperatures, and uh, we'll be getting back to fall as we go later in the week. So temperatures today will top out in the mid to lower 80s today. This is way above average. Uh, we should be near 62 degrees this time of the year. Just another fantastic summer like day uh, in the inland areas. We go here temperatures in the uh, lower 80s here, except for this exception at Little Valley 79. But of course it is a valley, so it's going to be kept a little bit cooler, but warm and humid. It's warm. -ed. That's going to be the weather for today. Your next seven days are on the screen. 80 degrees Wednesday. The record for tomorrow actually is 79. We'll likely break it if we hit 80. And then there's that cold front knocks us down to 67. Scattered showers and storms more numerous. And then take a look at that. Uh, Saturday morning and Sunday morning could be our two first frosts of the season with low temperatures bottoming out in the upper 30s. The man with the big pipes, Norman Rodriguez, will have sports right after this. The Frewsburg Pharmacy is the small town pharmacy with big time service. Located at 26 West Main Street, Greg Nelson treats his customers like family, so you know you are in good hands when you walk through the door. The Frewsburg Pharmacy has everything you need and more, including a gift shop for the seasons. Stop down to the Frewsburg Pharmacy today and let the staff show you why the Frewsburg Pharmacy is the pharmacy that cares about you. Hey, this is Ryan Hedrick reporting from the Jamestown Bowling Company where the bowling is off the hook, the food is even better, and the camaraderie watching sports is oh so great. The food is fantastic and the drinks are cold. Mark was bowling almost a perfect game. Mark, do you come here a lot? Every day. Wow, Mark comes here every day. No excuse for you not to get to Jamestown Bowling Company on Foot Avenue. Jamestown Bowling Company. Eat, drink, bowl, and be merry. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. Good afternoon, sports fans, and welcome back to News Now at Noon. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. The Maple Grove Red Dragons men's soccer team is back in action tonight against the combined falconer Casadega Valley team. Their last game was on October 4th against the merged Westfield Brockton team. The game will start at 7 o'clock. In other local action, the Panama women's volleyball team will be at home tonight against the Sherman Wildcats. Panama is coming off of a three-set sweep against Pine Valley on October 4th. Sherman hopes to recover from a four-set loss against Clymer back on October 2nd. First serve will be at 5 o'clock. The Yanks suffered their worst postseason loss in team history, getting smacked by the Red Sox 16-1 in Game 3 as they trail Boston two games to one in the series. Luis Severino was pulled after he allowed six runs through three innings. Brock Holt had a game to remember for the Red Sox, hitting for the first cycle in MLB postseason history. Nathan Eovaldi got revenge on his former team, pitching seven innings and striking out five batters. Game four will be at 8.07 tonight on TBS. Yesterday, the Buffalo Sabres defeated last year's Stanley Cup finalist Las Vegas Golden Knights 4-2. Sabres team captain Jack Eichel had two goals. Alternate captain Kyle Ocposo recorded a pair of assists. 
Goaltender Carter Hutton saved 35 of 37 shots faced. With their second win of the season, the Sabres improved to four points. The Sabres' next game will be on Thursday against the Colorado Avalanche. The game can be watched on MSGB or the NHL app. Justin and Matt, back to you. All righty, Norm. Thank you, sir. Well, this is a very interesting story. Since its inception, Facebook has said it wanted to bring the world closer together. And well, now right. it's taking the next big step in that, in achieving uh, uh, putting a camera in your home. It's releasing its own smart speaker called the Portal that will the Portal that will let you make video calls to other users on Facebook. They currently have that through the Messenger app that you probably use. It's the first time the company would gain a physical foothold in people's homes though. These new Facebook de devices are very similar to Amazon's Echo Show, the Alexa smart speaker which is already has a camera and screen on it. And these Facebook devices even use some of that technology from Amazon, allowing you to use voice commands to play music and control other devices. But what Amazon's devices don't have, which these new devices do, is the ability to use the Facebook Messenger network, which can reach up to 1.3 billion people. So uh, Dakota, in addition to being an amazing weather person, you're also very big on tech. Oh, he's as, mad. As uh, I am and it's just uh, another device it's just what it's, do you, think? you know these smart home devices I've said it before these smart home devices is lazy tech we're getting so lazy now where where you know we don't want to get up and do things we'd rather have something that sits in a corner and be like turn my lights off because I don't want to get up off my butt and do it and <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah. oh and he's going also, and he's going you know <laughs> all these things are just uh, how in the hell can the NSA not keep their hands off this stuff? Oh, he's bringing in the NSA now. Oh, oh no. It's gosh. nothing. All these things are just spy devices. That's I, that's I, oh. I do feel like the and let us know what you mm. think in the comments, but I feel like the Alexa uh, stuff from Amazon goes too far. Even like with my smartphone, like you can say and I want to say this carefully or else she'll probably do it. If you say, "Hey Siri, there she is. Hey Siri, what's up? <laughs> oh, she doesn't understand. That's but fine. Goodbye, Siri. Instead, she's playing music. <laughs> That's nice. This is the song we just played in the other half. But you know what I mean? Like, it's um, they're listening all the time when you say these words. So, be advised if you have an Amazon. And I've heard some crazy stories about that. What Me the too. Amazon records. Three o'clock. And if you go into your Amazon in app, you can you can hear it. So. It's uh, interesting to say the least, Mr. Hunter. I mean, all this stuff, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I just think the tech industry is just, I mean, I think that they have decided that they have invented everything they can be invented. So, right. they're, so now they're sticking Wi-Fi into unnecessary things. Like, you know. I have Wi-Fi in your weather graphics. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, at, uh, what was it, uh, CES, I think it was last year, they came out with a Wi-Fi hairbrush. Who needs Wi-Fi in their hair? Why do we need our hairbrushes connected to the internet? There's the quick solution, seven day. There you see record breaker, possibly tomorrow. The record high is 79. I got our forecasted high at 80. And take a look at that. We cool down with that cold front back to where we should be. And then um, uh, uh, our first frost of the season could be Saturday night and Sunday morning. Uh, we've got uh, low, uh, we've got to upper 30s there. I'm ready for the weekend already. And uh, there you go. Woo! Matt loves it. Let's just Matt go to black it. because uh, I think I need to have my lunch. I think you, are you in a bad lunch? mood already? Everybody's I, grumpy today. Hi, I'm Chris. Fine. What's up? I hope you're not grumpy, Chris. Chris isn't Chris grumpy. Chris isn't grumpy. Tim, Tim's hello. Tim's not grumpy. Tim, don't be grumpy. Joe's not Nicole, grumpy. He's grumpy. I don't know. I'm the guy down it. the street's not grumpy. I'm Enjoy just an old. Enjoy the warmth. It's probably people are ready for fall and... I, I'm ready to enjoy these next couple of days of warmth before the S word. Snow! No! Dirty in the Rockies. Wow, you're... You're whole... <laughs> Jesus, Matt. <laughs> Matt, how the hell did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Have a great day. Oh, my God.